Hello, this is a little telephone interview, which, unfortunately, I wish it was live and in the studio, but we're catching Jonathan Winters at uh, an unearthly hour of the morning. Jonathan, welcome to Toronto. I'm sorry we missed you when you were well, here on Monday evening. I've had a, had a great time, and I uh, always have had a good time. I came here when I was a little guy, and now um, I come here as a performer, and I must uh, say again, which I hope doesn't sound too corny, and it isn't meant to be corny, certainly, that uh, I've always thoroughly enjoyed my stays here in Toronto. And Jonathan, we enjoy you whether you're here in Toronto or whether you're on the Par Show or wherever we catch you as in well, your many I, facets. I'm working in the uh, Par Castle tomorrow night. The king is away. The king is away. <laughs> and so I'm going to be uh, out of the dungeon and up off the, uh, the uh, out in the moat area. <laughs> How is it... Uh, Jonathan, uh, when you're on the Par Show, do you have the feeling uh, a little? Is it a different feeling to the normal show? Well, it is in that you're sort of sitting in an imaginary electric chair. Yeah. And he has a hold of the controls. Yeah. But I, a lot of people, as you might well imagine, columnists, people in general, uh, ask that uh, question: What is Jack Par really like? Mm -hmm. And I always say, which is uh, true great deal of it is, certainly, that I, I'm trying to find out who I am. <laughs> and uh, I found out about three quarters, and I'm satisfied. I don't want to find out the whole story, and I don't think anybody does anyway. I think everyone loves you just the way you are, John. But I, uh, I uh, get along with Mr. Parr, and he has his problems, uh, but then again, don't we all? And um, it's, uh, I think, uh, proven to be a very great show. It's uh, also quite a controversial show, mm -hmm. and uh, extremely difficult for anybody to sing and uh, sit in that uh, or on that throne and um, get away with uh, what he gets away with, um, yeah. which is a great deal. Well, I think the another thing too, Jonathan, you agree, is the fact that you're exposed to the public every night of the week, and it must be a terrific mental strain. Yeah, to be in I this don't. Position. I held it down for two weeks, and yeah. that was enough for me. I uh, had a lot of fun. But it wouldn't be my uh, kind of format. I wouldn't want it. You wouldn't like a show like that. No, I have. Uh, I've sort of. Uh, well, I. I don't want my own show, which sounds. Uh, that's a twist. Yeah. Well, I remember I, you. I had my own. You show. You had a wonderful show, and uh, which was a little fifteen minute. Thing. Yeah, I remember that delight. But I'm satisfied. I've sort of uh, gotten a good look at myself recently, mm -hmm. and. Uh, what I want to do is to, uh, rather than uh, gamble, I have never been much of a gambler with the dice or money, or and I just lost a business, uh, which uh, fortunately I didn't pour uh, thousands and thousands of dollars in, but I uh, got stung, let's say, bitten pretty badly. Well, that's a sad, a sad thing to happen to anyone. Anyway. But this happens to a, a lot of people, and at least I, uh, I look at it this way, an opportunity for the experience, and... Uh, Although it was a little bitter, I had a lot of fun. I had a little treehouse. I called the treehouse uh, down in New York in Manhattan, and it was sort of a gift shop, and mm -hmm. I had a lot of wild gifts, and it went under. But um, as I say again, this is a story people have a lot, many more, many problems than I do. Well, maybe Jack could have helped you the same way he did with Charlie Weaver's music. Yeah, <clears throat> so maybe I ought to go into the cemetery. <laughs> uh, I, to, I don't know where I'd find one the size of Gettysburg. Well, that's for sure. But I... Uh, I've sort of uh, come to the conclusion it's best to be a guest, mm -hmm. and um, this way you can stretch your career out over a period of years. You don't get overexposed. Uh, you don't make a million dollars, but uh, by the same token, uh, again, uh, it's uh, you say to yourself, well, what do you want out of life? Yeah. And uh, how much does it take to be happy? Mm -hmm. I've seen people in uh, trailer camps that are a lot happier than the people in the $400,000 homes. And somebody says, really? Is that true? I don't buy that. Well, uh, I, I do. Yeah, and, it, uh, your own satisfaction. I've seen people in castles that are kind of lonely, especially when it rains at night and uh, there's nobody out there in the compound area. You know, the horses are over the drawbridge and there's the clown standing in an empty aluminum metal case, you know. And uh, you're quite happy then to con continue sort of yeah. being uh, being Jonathan Winters, making a living, but not you know, being well, thrust I've in. I've got a great family. I've got a very attractive wife and two lovely children. And I've just I've given the road up this year, which was a big move for me. So what uh, are you? You're just going to settle back now? My income shot mm -hmm. out the window, but uh, I found out there's a great deal more in life than money. It yeah. took me a long 34 years to find that out. 
Yeah. Uh, because nobody was any hungrier for the dollar sign than I was, and uh, I find I wasn't alone in that thinking. Most of us are, you know, we get out of line, and I, I've just been satisfied to stay at home, as I'd said now, not meaning to repeat myself, no. but to make considerably less, but to be a great deal more happy. I think this is uh, more important in your family life and your own health. Well, it is to me. Yeah. I mean, you have to make a decision. Uh, it's just like the great American salesman. You know, he's out on the road all the time, and he comes home, cuts the grass for about two hours on Saturday, throws a baseball to his kid, and calls this uh, family life. This you know, life. and he's back in the Sunday plane and gone. For another week. And I just got tired of this life. I had enough of it. And I realize there are many men that make their living this way and have to, as uh, I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, uh, it isn't nailing salesmen, the guys on the road, or anything else. It it, it falls uh, uh, on the person himself, the individual, and it just happened to be me. And I just said, well, I'm, I'm just tired of the road. Mm. I just got uh, downright lonely, and uh, which I think uh, nine out of ten of us uh, do. You can get lonely in a room full of people. Holy God! Yeah, I, it's just uh, you know uh, they can put you in the finest hotel in the suiter rooms or in the YMCA, and they, they both take on the same appearance after about 72 hours. Yeah. Jonathan, where did you uh, get all your voices? Were they uh, people you knew, really? I've heard you mention them. Well, um, some characters I took from movies and incorporated them into bits, you know. Uh -huh. I never used their names. The other beautiful thing, Grandma Frickett, I always... Well, uh, this was a conglomeration of old people I knew, yeah. and I sort of put into one old lady... And uh, a lot of them were characters that I knew in my family and friends and this and that. Because the material you get is, is so wonderful. I remember you had living with Jack one night on an airplane when you were the pilot. Oh, yeah. And you played several different characters. This is all purely ad lib, isn't it? Yeah. We, this is, I think we is just a, winged that whole sketch. Yeah. There are very few good ad lib, as I said uh, before to uh, one guest we had. There are a few ad lib comedians around today who can take a situation like you did and make it into something very humorous. I mean, you, most of them have nine or ten writers. And... Well, I, uh, I sincerely believe this. I think we're coming to a stage in comedy where people are now looking and asking for ad-lib uh, mm -hmm. things, and that uh, it's becoming doubly hard to write funny sketches. Parr said this himself, uh, that people just don't buy the rehearsed, planned sketches. No. I'm talking now of not musical sketches that the dancers and singers are, uh, have, but the uh, the comedians that they're uh, they're getting uh, they're starting to buy the ad lib, you know, off the cuff. Is, yeah, off is the back cuff in again. stuff, and uh, asking audiences like the Michael and Lane approach of saying, "You think up a situation, and we'll wing it up here for you and ad lib it." Do you find that difficult, John? It's difficult. It's a but it's a tremendous challenge, and yeah. uh, it's a great uh, reward and great satisfaction to the performer because you uh, it's a real brainwashing in front of an audience. But for the first time in your life, you really got to think on your feet. Look, uh, you think up the situation, and please keep in mind, don't look for tremendous lines, uh, polished lines, or a, or a finished uh, piece of material, but that you'll know that I'm certainly at living up here and uh, gambling and having fun, yeah. and uh, that there won't be any great payoff or, oh, Henry finish. Mm -hmm. But um, just go along with me, and people do, surprisingly enough. And they, when you you can end it almost any time you want to, and they say, "Great, buddy, I mean, we know we're with you." That's right, and you've also achieved something which a lot of people uh, have never done in their lives. Yeah, um, I uh, said to me one time uh, by a member of my family that, "Why aren't you Bob Hope? Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be a financial tycoon. Mm -hmm. You have millions and millions of followers." And I said, "Well." Uh, I admire Mr. Hope, I always have, but I'm satisfied uh, with my own limitations. Uh, I have a, a tiny following, certain miniature... Oh, I don't think so. Is. I think you have, have but, a big following. Uh, I, I'm just uh, thankful for the following I do have, and uh, I'm aware of my limitations. And, uh, and I always say, too, I, I'm cheap, and uh, I pay for writers. I can't uh, have a little angry afford, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I also would say, at this, Jonathan, you're very modest. No, I, uh, I'm honest. I, and I, I tried being a phony one time. It didn't work for me. I bought a pair of dark glasses, and I thought I'd uh, appear as a star, you know. But, uh -huh. uh, I threw them away. Didn't, didn't, didn't work out. Today, no. <laughs> Some clown said, quit hiding. We know who you are, fat face. And I said, <laughs> okay, Dad. And threw the glasses out the window. 
Now, uh, Jonathan, I think you have a wonderful formula for success uh, in your thinking. And uh, well, I have a lot of fun, and yeah. uh, I always say this: if the, if the depression hit tomorrow, and God forbid it does, uh, uh, we've been on some pretty shaky ground down in the states since mm. that thing in '29. Yeah. But uh, and all kinds of recessions and things like that nature. But I, I was thinking about the other day somebody was making some predictions of things to come, and they said next couple of years there could very well be a major depression in the United States. And I said couldn't bother me. I, I couldn't care less. I more or less expected it uh, <laughs> because I've been so lucky, and I am a guy that uh, finished high school uh, only in that they felt sorry for me as a former serviceman. I stepped into college and got a deep pin, a pledge pin, and somebody hit me 17 times with a paddle, and I got mad and quit college, because I thought I was a little grown up. My dad had beat me, and I didn't, wasn't, I didn't want anybody in a knit sweater uh, holding a sacred candle and saying, you know, chapters of colleges. Mm -hmm. So uh, I left school, and uh, I've never studied. Uh, it's obvious I'm rather apparent in many of my bits, I guess. Uh, but I'm, uh, to, to sum it up, uh, in a capsule, I, I'm ahead. Yeah. Um, and uh, if they say, well, buddy, you're, we're going to put you on a mattress down there on Main Street, I'd say, crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's all right with me. I've had a little fun, you know. That's a tremendous uh, way to look at life. Jonathan, uh, before we let you go back and get yourself all prepared to head for New York and the, and the Jack Parr show, how about a few little old voices that you do just to sort of well, Granny Frickett, <laughs> and I just wanted to say that it wasn't easy playing goalie against Rocket Richard. <laughs> that kid throws a hard puck. Broke my glasses, <laughs> but I spiked him. That's what I say. It's kind of old-fashioned, you know. <laughs> Drove my skates and I'm straightening them up there. And uh, I forget to either. Baby Bendelstiff is the guy that says, I want to get another picture of the Mountie. Turn around there, Mountie. That's a good shot of you. I think I have the camera open. It was at 6-3. I'm sorry there, officer. I wonder if you turn around again. And there's always uh, my friend Uncle Willie. And there's an arrow in you, Uncle Willie. Turn around. The Indians are all over here. I can go on there. Yeah. Kinds of... Do you know the one thing I really do love? Your sound effects are better than anything that I've ever heard on radio or television. Well, I've been doing those since I was a kid. A lot of people say, well, you must do about 5,000, but I uh, really only do about 10. In your arrow. Oh, the Indian arrow. arrow. I love yeah. that one. Well, I uh, played... Uh, I was always asked to participate in Cowboys and Indians because of my arrow. <laughs> I didn't uh, run as fast as the other kids. Mm -hmm. And I just stood there and took the arrows, and they were sort of fascinated, you know. that At least uh, I ended up the chief. <laughs> I never got to be the cowboy, but I was the you chief. You never got to win. No. no. You're always on the losing side. But I don't mind being a loser. I've uh, been writing a book for the last couple of years I can't seem to finish <laughs> called Just Missed. Just and Missed. And I always felt that it would be a bestseller because everybody's just missed. Yeah. And I always say, is it too bad to have just missed, you know? Mm -hmm. Very often, it's maybe the better thing to have done. Yeah, yeah. Why be? Why not settle for vice president? That's Chances right. are you make your speech at the inaugural, and <laughs> they shoot you. You know. <laughs> and you also have my luck. <laughs> you also have a record too, which I'm looking forward to. We haven't got a copy of it yet. And as soon as I get a copy, I'll be playing it on my show. Yeah, it's on the uh, on the Verve label. I'm putting mm -hmm. another one out, which I hope will be considerably better than the first one. And you're putting you're putting another new one out on the same label. Yeah. Way. It's what will be the type uh, of this down one? Down to Earth with Jonathan Winters. And, We're looking uh, forward to that one, too, Jonathan. I think this the quality on the first one uh, wasn't the greatest bad thing for me to say, but uh, <laughs> you know, as I say, I'm pretty outspoken and honest. And I'm not looking to be another Perry or Bing. And, um, uh, but I, I think it's uh, it's got some funny material. I'm not going to down my <laughs> record no, no, completely or I won't sell anything. People say, well, we don't want that. <laughs> he said it was bad. Don't buy it, Margaret. <laughs> So, uh, but I think there are some funny things on there. And, Wonderful. Uh, there, it's just that uh, it, it could have been a lot better. Right. Well, you're taking over the par show tonight, are you? No, I'm just uh, going to appear as a guest. Oh, who's supposed to run it? Oh, you're not doing it tonight. Oh, I well, thought maybe you were taking over the so. boss's chair. Well, I, I had the opportunity to do it, mm -hmm. but I felt I'd be so doggone Bush by the time I hit LaGuardia. Yeah. That um, there was no sense in... Uh, 
walking and, you know, trying to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and asleep after the first 20 minutes, you know, in the commercial. So I just say, Arlene Francis is going to be on, and I'm just going to sit on the panel and make faces and try to come up with a couple of lines. Oh, and which can no doubt. No doubt you will. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan Winters. It was a delight, and, uh, and really, I, I know uh, you're very tired, and I thank you very much for taking No, no, I read until 5. I used to uh, stay out all night, and now I've curbed that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, look into the Gideon Bible, and then uh, I leaf through the daily papers yeah. and see what the Cincinnati Reds have done. But I write a lot. This is my time. You this know, is your morning. time for writing. In the morning, in this uh, the hotel, sometimes they they were well since I've been here they've been blasting. Yeah. So uh, one doesn't you know <laughs> meditate. Well, you you've been evening. staying in the hotel. Uh, I got up as high as I could. I yeah, I live next door to you. And uh, this clown is right alongside of here. I don't know. Maybe it's uh, kind of on a crystal looking trying to get through <laughs> to me or something. But <laughs> you know, the old man, my son, I have a secret. <laughs> but I uh, this is these I write a lot, and uh, this is my hour to write. I find most writers usually have to get to. I got, we went to a little uh, uh, party after the show on one of the clubs here in town and uh, went around there and I came back here and just sort of stretched out. Well, wonderful, Jonathan. I wish you every continued success. We well, got. thank you. And I hope next time you come to town we get a chance to get you live in the studio. Well, you have my word. Uh, I'll do it. Wonderful. I'll do it. And uh, we'll be looking for you tonight on the Jack Parr Show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Good night now.